Hi, I'm Adam Simmons of Project Geospatial. Uh, we're here at the GEOINT 2024 Symposium in Orlando, Florida. And uh, in this segment, we have the pleasure of talking with Capella. And uh, Capella is a really interesting company. We had the pleasure of uh, overviewing companies like them before. Uh -huh. And I believe we've done it once before with you in the previous year. Not with uh, me, but not with, with you. Right, with That's Piam, right. Right. exactly. Yes. And yes. so we're excited to get some amazing updates of where Great. you are today. Great. Uh, sir, if you don't mind, would you introduce yourself? And we will get right into understanding who Capella is and what you have uh, this year. Great, great. Um, I'm Frank Backus, the CEO for Capella Space, and i um, excited to join this team. I joined last October, in October 2023, um, and you know, really drawn into this particular company. The platform that Capella represents um, is really something I've been looking for my entire career, and I've been in the space industry for 42 years, um, and it's just what Capella has brought together technology-wise, system-wise, full, fully vertically integrated capability-wise, it is what drew me to the company. Right. Okay, so diving into that a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, can you overview for us the uh, capabilities of Capella today? Absolutely. I, I mean, certainly we'll start with the space side, right? Um, Capella, first of all, from a spacecraft perspective, is not a small satellite. When It's small when it's launched, but when it goes on orbit, the antenna you know, unfolds out into a very large antenna, three and a half meters. Um, and the most important part in synthetic aperture radar is the ability to have a strong signal um, because a SAR satellite is a signal platform. It's a signal satellite. So you have to be able to broadcast a strong signal to receive a strong, clear signal back to then build the image from. And so power are, um, you know, the advancements that we've made in the current satellite, the Acadia satellite, um, all around power um, and the ability to have a, a, a very high resolution capture of that signal. So the solar panels, the batteries on, on the satellite, the amplifier on the satellite, these are the areas that were upgraded that give us the advantage we now have in the industry to have a very strong signal, very strong satellite that leads to great resolution, very high quality data. And what, how many satellites do you have up right now? Today we have four satellites on orbit. Um, we are launching an additional satellite in June of uh, this year and another one in July. And then we will be on a continuous cadence of launching satellites. It's one of the things that we're doing at Capella is building out our manufacturing capability to be on a continuous cadence of satellite builds and satellite launches. Uh, how is it with you? I mean, everybody has supply chain issues. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and that's no secret for everybody that's struggling right. with it. Yes. Is, are, you, uh, um, are you starting to uh, adapt by building some of these things in-house for yourself or are you still uh, dealing yeah. with what everybody else is dealing with? So Capella actually has built most of its satellite and designed most of the satellite in in-house always. Okay. Um, but that does not eliminate the supply chain challenges. So as an example, propulsion systems have been a challenge for everybody, in, certainly everybody in LEO. Oh, yeah. Um, and so what Capella is doing and has done this year is we've signed additional contracts to be able to buy propulsion capability from multiple companies. So we're designed now in a flexible way that allows us to have more than one um, a propel, you know, propulsion system that we can go with on a satellite. Launch is another challenging component as well. You have SpaceX out there and Rocket Lab. We've launched in both configurations, both environments. We designed the satellite so that we can launch and attach vertically and horizontally. So we can be flexible as to the launch platform. So a lot of the supply chain really is about flexibility. Right. Can you design in a flexible way that allows you to take advantage of the supply chain? Not everybody is struggling at the same time. The question is, can you take advantage of the people that have capability that is currently available? Right. Also, long lead acquisition of that supply chain is important. So the financial stability of the company is critical for long lead acquisition of the supply chain. Excellent. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forwarding sure. to what you have uh, currently, and mm -hmm. actually as it's relevant to the uh, GUN symposium. Here. Yes. Uh, so what have you uh, what have you seen in terms of unique partnerships that you're creating with yourselves? It's not obviously just about yourself, but you're creating right. a unique network. Yes, that's correct. Uh, with uh, with your potential clients and uh, and the people who can work with you, right? Oh, absolutely. Our partnership program has been one of the most successful things that Capella has put in place over the last 12 to 18 months. The ability to 
partner with the analytics companies and be able to bring AI and ML capabilities to the data set is really what is turning SAR into a human consumable and a machine consumable data set. And in, you know, in a market like SAR that's nascent for most of the industry, it's new, it's a new market. It didn't exist commercially five, six years ago. And so you need to have the analytics companies out there who are bringing it into an environment that can be consumed both from a human perspective and from a machine perspective. Um, and the analytics partner program has been able to do that. Prelegens is one of our most recent additions into that program, but we've had a tremendous amount of success there. Where, which industry do you feel is uh, expressing the highest demand of SAR right now? Oh, well, there's no question SAR has been a military and intelligence industry stronghold. A bait, that's the foundation of how SAR has been used for decades. However, we're seeing a lot of growth as well in non-military, non-intelligence types of applications. Um, climate, planetary, you know, oil and gas, it, you know, um, we signed and worked, we're working with flood base as well from an insurance, underwriting insurance, you know, market type of scenario. So SAR is very relevant to a lot of commercial industries, but it is new to them. So they need to learn how to consume SAR. We, we within the SAR industry need to build the environment where we can increase the value of SAR data for those markets as they develop. Would you identify that as one of the biggest uh, still hurdles to overcome for the it industry? Is. That's okay. right. Yes, yeah, so there's no question that, you know, looking at a SAR image, let's face it, if you have a nice, crisp, beautiful electro-optical image sitting in front of you as a human, that's the way we see the world. Um, when you look at a SAR image that is black and white um, and, and maybe a little bit more fuzzy, it isn't necessarily the same human reaction to the data. But the reality is there is more data available in a SAR image than there is in an electrical optical image. And especially when you start talking about nighttime harsh weather conditions, cloud cover environments, you're not getting ideal electro-optical in those situations. And that re represents 75% of the time. Right. So SAR is critical. So we and our analytics partners need to turn SAR into that human and machine readable capability. Excellent. Well, uh, as we wrap up, I want to give you the opportunity. Is there anything else you'd like to mention about Capella? Uh, anything interesting going on in your latest updates uh, before uh, before uh, I, I will actually. Um, I mean, we just, as you know, we just launched our most recent satellite. It was about, about it. yeah. Thank you. It was about three weeks ago or so, and um, that satellite. One of the coolest parts for me, and I've been in the satellite industry, worked on GPS and MilSatCom and the, the OPIR constellation, and watching our team, the Capella team, launch that satellite and do a fully automated deployment of that satellite. So from the satellite launch to a fully deployed capable satellite was 24 hours. And you say it's fully automated, that whole deployment yes, process. We, we, we basically gave it a command to deploy and the satellite took itself through the entire deployment process. The antenna, the solar arrays, the payload, the initial checkout, the initial capability of the satellite, the entire thing in 24 hours. And that used to be an orchestration oh. of a lot of manual yes, buttons and timing and everything. And, and what's critical about that is that right now what we're seeing in the industry, and one of the things that we see as a big concern in the industry, is could a commercial company be a part of reconstitution of satellite capability if something catastrophic occurred on orbit? In other words, if there was some major event on orbit that caused a lot of satellites to fail, um, whether it were a debris collision situation, electromagnetic pulse issue in space, something like that, how quickly could you reconstitute your capability on orbit? Well, the ability to deploy a satellite, launch it and deploy it, and have it operational in 24 to 48 hours is, is an amazing task. It's a critical component of the capability for reconstitution. Oh, so yeah. that's, you know, so seeing it live with our, you know, my first launch while I've been at Capella was an exciting thing to see. Yeah, it sounds like an amazing uh, narrative on resiliency. That's, oh, that's awesome. exactly. The resiliency, it's quite frankly, the technical and engineering expertise required to pull that off already exists in the Capella team. 
And that's, yeah, I mean, you just can't get something more exciting than that as a CEO. Yeah, awesome, amazing. Well, thank you very much, sir, for uh, having this conversation with us. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to seeing uh, the successes in here in the next year and uh, to seeing what happens at the next symposium. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you soon and letting you know how all this is playing out. Sweet. I'm Adam Sims of Project Geospatial. We will talk to everybody next time. Thanks. Thank you.